Right, hello everybody. Um, this is uh, going to be a masterclass today on using Trello. Um, as Helen has just said, um, please do use that chat box. Um, if you'd all like to use it right now um, and introduce yourself, introduce what your business is and um, give us a bit of information about you, it'd be great for you all to be able to make connections with each other. Um, so please do start writing in there and we can give you a shout out. Um, I run a consultancy called Socially Bonded and have been working in social media for about three and a half years now. Um, and and um, as part of that, I like to help local businesses, particularly trying to get their social media um, more, more interactive and more engaging for people. Um, and obviously now a huge number of people are having to work from home. And Trello is a tool that I have found really, really useful for helping me manage my workflow, which is why we started to um, think about doing this particular course. Um, I don't know if you're all typing slowly or just feeling shy, but please do let us know. Um, please do introduce yourself in that chat box and, um, and say hi and what your business is. Um, hello, Petra. It's very nice to have you on here. It's great to see people from further afield today from over in the Leeds area. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi, Judy. LinkedIn, yeah, that's a great network to be using. Right, I will get my screen up. Hello, Yvonne. Ah, cultural visitor attraction. How are you finding this lockdown? Has it affected you quite significantly? Let's get this up. Share screen. Let's use this. Okey Hi, Parve. Hi, David. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Peter. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, so Trello, while you're all introducing yourself. Oh, yes, Yvonne, I thought you thought you might be might be closed. Hi, hi, Peter Nicholson. A couple of Peters on here. So while you're introducing yourself, um, do ask questions as we go along through the chat. Um, I won't be answering them immediately, but I will pause every now and again in order to be able to check um, any questions that have been asked um, and make sure that we are letting you know the answers to the questions. Um, so there will also be opportunities as we go through for um, some interactivity. So hopefully you've got um, your laptops available so that you can join in with the walkthroughs that I'll do, because I'm going to show you, physically show you through the, the Zoom webinar, um, how to use Trello. But also there are some questions that you can answer to give me your feedback on how you're finding Trello itself um, and various other things um, to, for which you will need, just use your phone to go to a website called menti.com. The instructions will all come up on the screen. It's very easy. Um, I came across this with um, a, a conference that I attended, worked really well to get some interaction from people. So, introduction to Trello. What are we going to cover today? We are going to cover what Trello is and how we set it up um, and why it's useful. And then there are three things that I found in the time that I've used Trello, which I want to share with you for how you can go about getting the most out of it. Um, So first of all, this is the first quiz. I want to get a sense of how familiar you all are with Trello at the moment. Um, so if you see at the top of the screen there, it says go to menti.com um, and use that code. It, when you go to menti.com, it just asks you, that's all that's on the screen for that code. You stick that in and then it will bring up this question for you and you can select your options. So, so David says that he's never used it. If you go to that website, David can stick it in there. 
I'm hoping not many of you will be a total expert because you might not find the next two hours very interesting if that's the case. <laughs> so we've got people who set up an account, used it a bit, okay. Okay. So we've got a range of experience in here. The majority of people are obviously fairly new to Trello, which is good <laughs> for me. And a couple of you used it a little bit. So it'd be interesting to see um, if I can show you some new tips and tricks to make it even more effective for you. So what is Trello? Well, Trello describes itself as a collaboration tool that organizes your projects into boards. And in one glance, Trello will tell you what's being worked on, who's working on what, and where something is in the process. And so if you imagine it as being like a digital whiteboard, effectively, and filled with lots of sticky notes, like this picture, each note is a task for you and your team, and you have on there when it's due, you imagine that it, each of those sticky notes somehow has lots of photos and attachments and comments and actions on it. Um, you can draw in things from other systems like Salesforce um, and there's a place for everyone to be able to comment and collaborate. That's Trello. That's Trello. It's a, it's a massive whiteboard of all your activity that you can carry around in your pocket because you can access it from your mobile phone or from any, any website enabled any internet enabled device. So that's what Trello is. It is a way of streamlining this work and going a bit more paper free. So um, I know it was sent round in advance asking everyone to have access to Trello and ideally have an account set up. Um, so if you go to your Trello account now, if you log in, I'm going to show you a very, very quick um, run through of um, what you would see the first time you'd set your account up and you'd logged in. Um, it would look a little bit like this. And it talks you through, when you first do it, it talks you through. Um, so you would just start by naming your board. Um, I've set mine up for the process of this to be a test board. And it gives you suggestions of the first kind of lists that you might want to create, and then gets you to add some cards to it. So if you haven't yet set up any boards at all, you can follow this through on your Trello account now. Um, as you can see, it's showing you a screenshot of what it would look like on the right hand side there. And it suggests you add a checklist. Checklists aren't something that I personally use very often. You can just skip that step um, or you can just add in something like that. Now, as it suggests, it's very easy to just drag and drop between the columns so you can move stuff from to do to doing. There are other ways to do it, which we will come, up, come to later. Um, and then once you've got a board set up, this is what it would look like when you're staring at it. Um, so if anyone has already gone through that process, this is the kind of board that you would be looking at. Um, and then once you have got a board set up and you've logged out and you log back in, this is what you would see. Let's be down there because this is going to be a video. So um, it's quite an intuitive guide, that initial setup. So do use that. But if for any reason you've set up your account, you've gone away, you've come back and, and now you're looking at something that looks a little bit like this, probably with fewer boards in there then um, it's really easy just to go through the same process from here. So I'm now going to play this video through for you. Um, please do follow it and set up your boards at the same time if you would like to. And if not, then um, feel free to make notes, obviously, because um, I will show you from here how you go about um, setting up your boards from scratch. That's what we're going to do first. So I just need to turn my camera off. Hang on. Okay. No. 
can get this playing, but I want to turn me off. Okay, let's just turn me off. Apologies, everyone. I know we can't um, we can't hear Rebecca at the moment. We are trying to sort the audio out, so please bear with us. Apologies, I hadn't realised that was the case. Thank you. Um, right, let's go back and see if see if I can sort this. Right. Can you hear it now? When you first log into Trello after having board, this is the screen that you would see. So it's on the mm -hmm. board section, and it shows you any boards that you've sparred or that you want them to go at the top because you refer to them really often. Also, show you what your most recent thing, and then it would start going through the boards. For are your personal boards, which you can have an unlimited number? It would show you all the teams that you're a member of. So, this is one of my clients, so um, that's somebody else's team that I have been added to. As you can see, there are 14 members, that's pretty much the entire organization. And these are boards which I set up predominantly for this client. Um, and I have three members in the team from there. Um, in addition to that, I have guests on some of these boards, but I will come back to that in a minute. Um, and then I have my own business boards, which is set up as being team boards, but actually I'm the only person in that team at the moment. But because it's set up as a team board rather than personal boards, I am limited to just 10 boards. So that's what you would first of all see. If you wanted then to go and add a new board, you'd go up to this cross here, plus sign obviously, and then you've got the options to create um, business class teams, but you need to be upgraded for that, to create a team and to create a board. So we'll do board because that's what we're doing at the moment. So team visible. Yes, we'll make it so all members of my team. I have indeed used four of ten, but that's fine. Now they they've opened up a new thing where they have templates that already exist um, as opposed to just your normal board. I've got to add a title board let me and you can also choose to put some of these interesting colours and patterns in the background that are just it's an aesthetic really there's no actual um, purpose to doing that so let's stick a board title in First board. that then makes that go green 
and it opens this up. So from here, the menu is already there. You can add a description to your board so you know what it's all about. You can change this background. I find having big pictures quite confusing, so I do tend to prefer it just to be a plain colour. Obviously, once it's on there, you can search for your cards. You can add some stickers like this. You can go and have a look at your archived items. You can create collections that group boards together. Um, you can actually set it up so that if you are out of the office, but you see something which you need adding to a board, there are various ways to do it. Um, you can have the app on your phone so that you can share something straight to a board via the app. If you're on a desktop computer, you can do similar. You can have um, plugins for Chrome that will do the same thing, or you can do this, email it. So it, you have an email like that. You can email it, that address to yourself, because as you can see from this, I'm never going to remember what it is. Um, and you set up which list you want things to appear in, where you want it to go. Um, quite often I want mine at the top because the most recent thing I've put in there is generally what's most important to me. Um, and you can then, therefore, if you see something, just email it to your board. Uh, obviously, I've got none in here at the moment, so can't set that up to show you. But it's it can be quite useful if you find that you're needing to add things and you, for whatever reason, don't want the app on your phone, don't have space for the app. Copy the board. So, if you've got something which you're going to need to duplicate, like you might have a spring catalogue and then a winter catalogue, so a lot of what you need on there is going to be very similar, then you can quite easily just duplicate the board, rename it, and um, and then change some of the headings and delete stuff that you don't need anymore. This is useful if you want to set up a template board to use for a lot of other people, but you don't want them to disturb the master. If they make a copy of it, then obviously they can then personalise that. You can print and export it, or you can get rid of it completely. That's under the law. Um, Butler, this is some automation stuff. We'll come on to that a bit later. Power ups, we're going to come on to a little bit later. You can only do one on a free account, and then it will list your activities so that you can see what has recently been done on the boards. So up here, star it if this is something you're going to want at the top of your list so that you can get at it easily. This is just telling me which team it's part of. And so you can go view the team page, saying that the card is visible to the team. I can change it so it's only the people who are actually members of this specific board rather than people who are members of the team. So there, there are different ways to, to alter who can see what. You can either have team members who see everything and you invite guests to specific boards or you can have um, team members that see all the boards except those which are private and then only the members of that specific board can see it to make it completely public. Um, so here at the moment it's obviously only me. I can click invite and that is how I can bring other people onto the board. We'll come on to that in a minute. So. You then just do as it did in the initial setup. This is my column, so let's just go column one, add a list, column two, you can just hit enter and it automatically does that. If you don't want to add another one, just click away and it comes off. Column three, so we've got there. Then within each one, this is when you start adding your cards. So if you imagine this was a big whiteboard, and you had your headings of the tasks and activity types that needed doing, and then under each heading, you might stick a post-it note or you might add an activity. So let's say under column one, we've got um, source raw ingredients. This is going to be a board for a new product. Um, this is column one is going to be all about um, the actual product creation as opposed to this one which is going to be the marketing board and this one which is going to be packaging and then this one is going to be distribution 
we've got to source the raw ingredients, we've got to test batches. Obviously, this is very top line. If any of you do product launches, you're going, oh my goodness, you've missed out so many steps. Don't worry, this is just a test. Um, test batches. Um, you might then need to run up some kitchen samples and eventually go to production. Okay, and then under marketing, you might have um, posters that you need to create, leaflet drop, um, social adverts, new social accounts, teaser campaign, all sorts of things, and go live date. And in packaging, I have some straight choice. You get the idea. It goes through like this. So we'll forget about distribution for now. Because it, and then you can either just click or you can specifically click on that. This is to create another card from the template. Again, that's a new thing that's in there. I haven't looked into great detail in that. We'll have a, a go through it later. So this is then what an actual card looks like. You've got that card name up here and it tells you which board it's in. You can add a more detailed description. Right. Yeah, something useful. Save it. And then, as you can see out here, these little dots, these little lines appear to tell you that there is further information on this. Card. Now the description is different from a comment because this is the activity on the board. So I might put here card created April. I mean this activity is sort of recorded for you, so something like that's a bit pointless. But then I might for the other people on the team at mention it. And obviously there's Nobody else, there's only me. So we'll just say that I want everybody on the board to be notified. Board, get cracking on this. And that would send out a notification. You can add some emojis like that. Did it do it? Oh, yeah, it did. Did it and then took it away. So. A smiley face so this is how people could react to it to, to say that they've they've spotted it so that you can see all of the, the people who are on the board say yep yeah, seen it seen it seen it and they've all given a smiley face now, as you can see on here you've then also got the option to add attachments so you might add in here the ingredient list you could add in here potential suppliers all sorts of information you could add in here for where you're thinking about getting the more ingredients from you can add emojis to the comment itself. You can go and add a new card and it will ask which board or card you want to add that to. So from here, you might then need to create another board somewhere else. That's not something I've ever used. Don't know why people would use to use that, but the app mentions and the attachments are some of what makes these really, really useful because obviously there's a lot that people will need to add in in order to keep their project on in place. And now over here it's showing that we've got two comments and similarly a little paperclip symbol would come up if we started adding attachments. So over here, add to this card, so you can add board members specifically to this card if this is an action which is only going to concern the sourcing department, it's not going to concern those who are actually going to do the creation, that would be a manufacturer. So you might want to add people specifically to this card so that they know they need to keep an eye on it. Now, when I was typing here, it says watch. So you can watch this card for updates. And that just means that you get notified whenever anything comes through on this card, as opposed to needing to be ad mentioned. You've got labels. It's basically color coding. So you would add a label if within one column, if you didn't want to have like 20,000 columns, but within one list, one column, you had different themes going on, 
then you can use these labels to categorize those things. You can also use them to categorize progress. So it might be in the red phase if it's not yet started, but once it's going on, it's in yellow. And um, once you're almost at completion or you are at completion, the support needs to be moved, it could be a green. You can use the labels, you cannot use the labels. It depends how complicated your board set. Uh, the labels are a really nice way to make it clearer, for example, who needs to action sort of thing. You could assign a color to a person and uh, things like that. So they are a very visual way to immediately see something. So let's just add green to that. So it appears up here. Then you can add some checklists. So you might want um, suppliers checked. And then it shows you your completion, sign and, and a due date that you can put to this. So the suppliers can't do that unless you upgrade. you can add some checklists. Due date is what I prefer to use, and this is really simple. So you can set reminders, you can add a calendar power, power up so that you can see you can see everything by calendar view. So you can look at the month ahead and see what's due on which days. That can be really useful. Um, so if you're going to use due dates, I would certainly say that your calendar should be your first choice for a, a power up and you do only get one. So let's say this is going to be due then. And then when it becomes due, it stays green on here. It stays fine with the thing. But when it becomes due quite soon, so due tomorrow, it goes yellow so that you know things are due soon. And once they're overdue, they go red. So it's, again, very good, clear color coding. You can add a cover. You don't really need to. Um, you can move it from here. It's quite simple to do. Change the board or just change the list. You can copy it. You can make it into a template. You can choose to watch from here to get notifications as it tells you there. And you can archive cards once you no longer need them and you can share it. It's just as easy if you want to move something to click and drag it. You do it that way. So for your to do, doing, done, then obviously you just move stuff between your columns. So that is the that is the way that we go about setting up a um, go about setting up a board. Um, if you have any questions at this point, please do stick them in the chat box. I will have a, I'll just pause for a second and have a look and see what questions people have. Okay, looks like everybody's fine. So, move on. So, this is the next thing that um, I want to know your opinions on. So, if you could again go to that menti.com, and this time there's a new code up in the corner. Um, just like to know where you all are in terms of any boards that you've got set up. It might just be effectively a test board like I was setting up there. Um, cool of people so far got their boards set up. So, oh, brilliant. Lots of you have got boards. That's fantastic. Right. OK, so it looks like all, all of you so far have or the vast majority of you have. That's great. OK, 
Sorry, it's frozen on me. Right, just one second, I'll just try and get this back. Right. Okay, we shall share it again now and go back to the next one. Go from here. So we've now got boards set up, which is great. And um, the next thing that we need to do is obviously get some um, teams on there because. Trello is great in terms of being able to manage your own workflow. That's fantastic. But one of the major things that um, Trello is really good for is being able to manage that work across a team of people. Um, so rather than just working on your own, and this is where it comes into its own with remote working as we've got now, what we really want is being able to manage it with people that we're not currently able to see on a day to day basis. Um, so with a free plan, there aren't any limits at all to how many teams that you can create, but within each team, you can only have 10 boards set up. You can have an unlimited number when it comes to personal boards, but if you're using the free version of Trello, then you can only have 10 boards um, within each team. So you may end up setting up multiple teams just in order to be able to maximize the number of um, boards that you've got. So in real life, your team would be whoever you're needing to share this information with. So whoever you're working alongside, it could be um, the marketing team, it could be the product delivery team, it could be a website team, whoever it is in real life, they are the people that you need to invite into this team. You may well find therefore that if you've got a few teams set up that there's a lot of crossover between them, that's not a problem. And that would be the same as it was in real life. And similarly, you may well find that there are some boards that you set up where actually you don't need anybody else in there. It can just be you, um, particularly if you're using it to manage your own workflow. So if you need to add some people to your team, um, I will now show you how you go about doing that with this next walkthrough. So when it comes to setting up a team, you can do that from your board. Apologies for this, I'm having major technical problems. So right, start screen sharing again. Right. So when it comes to setting up a team, you can do that from your board here, or you can do that by going back home, in which case you can do it here by selecting the plus beside Teams. Uh, test team, team type, say project management. Yeah, our team organizes everything here. And continue. So this is when you then need to um, start bringing people in. If people have already got um, they're, if they're already members of Trello, they can be really easy to find. I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Yeah, see, these are people who I already work with, so I know they're already on here. So I can just select that. If you don't, they're not already on, 
then you can use their email address to invite them. And in actual fact, when people join on your invitation, you can earn credit towards um, Trello Gold membership. So at the moment, I can get two months of that free. And it's just that Trello Gold is somewhere between the free Trello and a business version. So it allows you some additional bits, um, uh, but not as much as the fully paid plans. So for the moment, I'm going to say that I'm going to do this later. This brings you to the team page where you can edit what's on here. You can add a pretty picture. You can edit the profile. So it's private at the moment. So you could choose which boards you want to allocate to this team. Create a new board entirely. Copy these templates. You can then go and add your team here. Now here we have team members or guests. There is a difference. So the team member would be if you are if you are working within an organization and you you would add everybody who has any kind of input into the team that you are going to create several boards for. So if it's a marketing team, you might add everybody in your marketing department, for example. If you're setting up a wedding planner boards, um, a series of boards for that, then you might add in people from your own family. You might add in people from the dress shop, from the venue, anything like that, in order to have them all in one place on your boards. You might, if it's a product development thing, have your marketing, your logistics and all of those kind of departments in. Alternatively, you can set up with team members of just one or two people, perhaps you and your business partner. And then you can have guests who you invite specifically to just one or two of those boards. Um, so they are kind of like they're team members, but with limited access. If you think of it like that way. So here, if clients, contractors or friends are added to the team boards, they appear here. So they're not full members. They can't see every board, but they are a guest on some boards. And as we saw in the other one, the alternative way of doing that is that you make everybody a full team member, but then you restrict access on certain boards to specific team members. Either way, I use the guests option. I find it simpler to just have well, as you saw on my socially bonded one, just myself, I am the team, but I invite guests to the boards that I need them on. And under settings, you can change this so that um, those outside the team can still see it. But that sort of defeats the object of having a team. If you use Slack, you can link this so you can then have your cards visible in Slack. Um, I don't know if anybody here currently uses Slack, but if you do, you can explore that linking. That's free to do. Then you need to be able to upgrade in order to be able to do these sorts of things. And similarly with business class. Now, if you wanted to do this from within boards, let's go back to my test board. You just click on the invite button here. Then you can either tap in their email address or their name if you know that they're already on here. Or you can do it this way. So you can create a link and copy and paste that and stick it in a normal email. And then people can join using that link and it makes them a board member. It doesn't make them a team member. It makes them a board member. You can then if you've just got them as a board member, you can then go to that team page and you can alter what their rights are. You can also create a team from here. That plus symbol, as we saw at the beginning. So I'll show you. So once we've got, let's go to my social media calendar. So here you can see there's various different people. Um, the admin has got those little things there. Now, because this is a team board, it's visible to the whole team and I'm in the team, but I'm not actually on this board. I can click to join that board. I felt that I needed to be on this. But as you can see, it's all quite old and out of date. Uh, the marketing planner, this is one of my boards. So I am the board admin. These are the other people who are currently on the board. So under each person's name, 
is whether they're not on the team, they're a guest, I can add them to the team, whether they need their permissions changing, what activity they've done, and you can remove them quite easily. Um, so I can just change that there. You can do it this way once you've already got some people and guests set up. You can go down to your teams there. So that's a quick intro to Teams. They're fairly straightforward. They're a really, really easy way to share stuff because if you don't have a team set up on your board, then you're really only managing your own workflow, which might be all you need Trello for. But to really get a lot, <clears throat> to really get the biggest benefit from it, you want to be sharing it with a team so that you can be working live on projects and have everything together in one place. It, it can save you the cost of needing to have shared drives. It can show you the hassle of a huge number of emails coming in and out of your account all the time. There's a lot that using Trello rather than some other more bespoke solutions can save in terms of time and money. So when it comes to so. We're now up to having set up our teams and having set up our boards. Um, so this is the next question. What could you use Trello for? Um, I've given you some examples along the bottom. Um, you can answer as many as you want. Um, which of these things do you think you could use Trello to manage? Um, that one in the middle-ish there should say blog scheduling. If you want to go to menti.com and use that code and then tap on anything that you think you could use Trello to manage. Yep, client project status here. Yep. People have got the hang, yeah, all of these things. Social media content, absolutely, that's what I use it mainly for. So the correct answer for this would be all of them, um, which is why I made it so that you could select as many of them as you want. You could use Trello for all of these things. You might not want to, there might be just specific ones of these that you can already see it being useful for you. But in reality, you could indeed use it for everything. So I've got some examples. This is um, some screenshots of some of the boards that I have. So this is an example of how I use it to manage curated content. Um, this is um, this is one course for my client there. Um, so originally when I started managing their content, I would um, find articles that I wanted to share and I would save them to my pocket account, which is like an, an online um, app where you can save articles that you want to store to read later. Um, a bit like Evernote and bookmarking and things like that. And I would add a tag to it and that tag would then trigger um, a linking recipe which would send that article into a Google spreadsheet. And then every few weeks I would go through that Google spreadsheet and I would delete out anything I'd changed my mind on. I'd send off that spreadsheet to my client and they would have to go through and check the spreadsheet and send it back telling me what was and wasn't okay to post on social media. So quite a long winded process. It would take um, a good few days to turn that around. Um, and it also meant that things were often out of date by the time we actually got around to seeing what they were happy for us to post. Now, instead by using Trello, it's completely real time. So I set up columns which are awaiting approval and columns which are already approved, as you can see here. And then um, anything that is awaiting approval the various members of the team can go in, they can check this through and anything that they're happy with me using, they just 
pull it across to the approved column and anything that they're not happy with me using, they can just delete. So it's much better because it's more visual, it's much faster, it's just an easy drag and drop from one column to another. I can add comments in and I can tag team members if I need them to get on it that day and approve a piece of content urgently. Um, I can also add comments into the description. So I can say I've chosen this piece because I think we could link it into XYZ. Um, I can put a due date on it if it's time sensitive. Um, so there's a whole heap of things that I can do with it that I just couldn't do with a simple spreadsheet. So managing content when there are other people involved who need to be able to approve things, Trello is really great for that. Then this is another way that I use it. This is using the power up of the calendar, which is by far my favorite power up. Um, this is how I keep track of events that we need to be bearing in mind when it comes to the social media for this account. Um, so as you can see on here, I've got various days that are coming up or weeks that are coming up that are going to be particularly important for our own messaging. They're things that we have some kind of a, um, an investment in. Um, courses that are coming up, as you can see, these ones have now passed and I didn't tick them. That's why they're now red on the due date. Um, so these are events that we would be holding as would things that go in here. Um, and then once you've got things in these lists, you click calendar and it shows you them on an actual calendar, which is why I love this for event planning and for um, mapping out what's coming up because then I can just look through, okay, what's happening in April? And it shows me what days I'm going to need to be more active on social media or what days I'm going to have to make sure I've got particular content going out. And by using the colored labels, I can use that. I can tell myself which accounts it's going to relate to. So for this particular client, they have three accounts and I can relate one color to each account. So I know, really quickly looking at this but on the 15th of April I need to make sure that two particular accounts are talking about volunteering. And then this is the final slide shot that I'll the final screenshot I will show you. Um, you could I use this to bring all my marketing activity. So this is a way you can use Trello to organize your marketing activity. And this is as in an original strategy. So Sorry, that's gone off faster than I expected. In that case. No, I can't. Okay, so apologies for that. I can't go back without closing the whole thing down. So um, what I had on there was I would have a column for the um, the user personas that I was going to be working on, then a column for what content topics I was going to talk about. Then I would have a column for um, the, the actual activity I was planning on social media. And I would split that activity into what's going to be low impact, but really easy to do. What's going to be low impact, but really hard to do. And it, it just helps me prioritize um, which activities I would want to do first. So bearing in mind all those different ways that I've um, shown you how I use it myself, um, please do rate these statements. Um, I'd love to see how you're feeling about Trello so far. Um, you can rate them between one to five. Um, so far, people are obviously a bit in the middle with how easy it's looking to them. Um, this is the average of all of the answers. So some of you are over here, which is great. Um, and that's good, you're seeing how you can use it. A um, couple of you still thinking that um, they're slightly unsure, um, please do let us know any questions that you've got. Um, there'll be a big time at the end for specific questions as well. If you're wanting to clarify something, I'm aware that the audio wasn't awesome right at the beginning for the first slide. Um, that will hopefully be better on the recording, which you'll be able to have a look at. Um, that's great that some of you can see how you could use it. If you want to let us know in the chat box, um, if you've got an idea already for what kind of board you might have, um, do add that in there. Um, a couple of you still 
preferring the idea of paper, pens and emails. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for stationery myself, so I can totally understand that. Right, let's try and move on to the next. Don't know why it says this. Okay. I will just pause this a second and bring up the next slide. Okay, so. So when it comes to the extra things, my three personal top tips, um, we've covered all the basics now. That is, that is actually as simple as Trello needs to be for a lot of you, just setting up boards, adding cards to your list and having a team if you need them. You, plenty of people just use Trello just as that and it works absolutely fine. But if you want to take it to uh, the next level a little bit, then there are these three things which I would say to bear in mind. Um, the first two will significantly enhance your boards once you're feeling confident using them. And the last one, simplicity, is really just a top tip, a bit of advice, really. Um, so, power ups. Um, these are some of the main power ups that are on there. Calendar, as I showed you, that is my preferred one. Um, but the Google Drive option or the OneDrive option or indeed Dropbox, depending um, whether you use those tools, they can be a really, really great way of integrating other shared cloud software solutions that you've got. Um, Salesforce, that's um, client information management system um, and MailChimp similarly, that can help integrate your email marketing plans um, and other types of activity. You can add maps in there if that's something that's going to prove useful to you. Um, it might work if you perhaps want to organize um, your workflow in terms of your visits to customers. Um, and there's also a power up which allows you to add some extra card fields. So if you're finding that some of what you are doing on your cards, there, there isn't the information, there isn't the place in there for you to add it. And you're just having to add lots of comments and long descriptions then um, the extra card fields may well come in quite useful for you. Um, so I'll just show you a quick five minute video of how you go about adding these power ups to your board. OK, so if we go back to this test board to find your power ups when you haven't yet got any on here, you click show menu and go to the power ups now as we've said already you can only have one on the free version if you need more than one which you may do in the future you will have to upgrade so let's have a look so all of the different power ups these are the ones they want to feature they're all down here so they they categorize them so you can link it to your dropbox as it says previews of dropbox attachments you can link it to Kanban, read me for your board in my markdown. Um, essential parts, the calendar, that's the one that I showed you before on my own. And that's one of the ones that I really, really love. I think the calendar is a really useful one for any kind of project management. Um, that's definitely, if you can only have one, that would be on my top of my list. And custom fields, if there are things that you think you're going to need that there aren't currently there on the on the cards themselves, then this is another really good one to think about having. Connect it to your Google Drive. If you're storing all of your documents in a shared Google Drive already, then there's a good argument for saying, what's the point in me having to constantly copy and paste links across from Google Drive or having to upload the documents again? Absolutely fair enough. So just do it this way, link it to your Google Drive, and then you can access your drive files really, really simply. You can set some lists, some limits to your lists. Um, not sure why you would want that one. 
and Slack, as we said, you can integrate it to Slack. If you've got something which for any reason require a map, you've got that option here. Um, and just like with connecting it to Google Drive, I personally use OneDrive a lot more, so you can connect it to your OneDrive. Um, you could connect it to your CRM, CRM so that you can easily access the people that you've got for your marketing plans. So as you can see, whole heap of things, similarly MailChimp, a um, whole heap of different ones that you can link to. And unfortunately, you do have to just choose one. Um, let's connect it to, because I've shown you the calendar already, let's connect it to Google Drive. Where's that one gone? Oh, I don't want to be in analytics and reporting. Google. Let's connect this to Google. Okay, so I've reached my limit. I've got my one. Don't want more than one. Get rid of that. I shall now click on Google Drive. And so you then need to link it. So you would basically just follow through whatever steps come, to, come out through from here. Allow that. Slides presentation. So I could turn this into a presentation. Let's have a look, see what that says. So this shows it all. So if you've created, you can therefore create your presentation in Trello and automatically turn it into a slide. Something that you can do. Um, test for Google integration. Let's open that up. So we've got the Google Drive now listed here in a power up. So if I click on that, it gives me the option to create an entirely new Google document if you needed to do that or attach a folder or a file that already exists. So you just click on it and it would show you everything that you've got in here. Let's connect that. It loads it up and there it is as an attachment. Simple. So if you don't need the calendar view, but you potentially have a lot of documents that you hold on Google Drive or OneDrive, that would be an extremely useful power up to consider. So have a play with that and, um, and see, which, see which of the power ups are going to be of most use for you. Um, you might want to set up 10 different boards and attach 10 different power ups so that you can play with all of them and then just delete any of the boards that you don't want anymore. Um, there's, they are they do take your boards to another level because it's then more than just a standalone thing that you have to move everything around yourself. You can start to integrate and save even more time. So that's the, um, that's the power ups. Um, hopefully you've seen something on there which looks like it could be interesting for you. Um, I've just had a question here. Can I please explain again how to access the calendar and how it works? Yes, that's fine. Um, so it's a case of when you're on your board, um, calendar is just up on the top right there, just in that video where it said Google Drive, it would say calendar instead. And um, you click on calendar and it just changes your view from being a list view to being a calendar view. And so you don't have to do anything except to make sure you have a due date on, a, on all your cards. Um, the due date is what tells Trello which of the which of the days on your calendar to move it to. Um, so that's how the that's how the calendar power up works. You just set up your board, set up your cards as normal, add a due date to every card, and then when you click on calendar, um, once you've added calendar, obviously add your calendar as a power up. Click on calendar, and it will show all of your cards on a calendar. Um, Yes, I will do that, Catherine. Um, I will do that in a moment. I'll do that live for you then. I'll show you how to add the calendar um, power up. Um, so I'll just quick, actually, I'll do that now. Um, come out of this. Let's try doing it this way. No. Okay, so let's go into Trello. So 
So if I'm on my test board here, um, let's go and add the power up. I need to get rid of this one. Google Drive, disable that. Okay, so now I can add a new one. So let's go down and find the calendar. So you just click add. And then it's there. And that's all you need to do to add it. Um, so I've got one card here that already has a due date. Um, I added that here, just clicking due date and chose when I want it to be due, which means that when I click on calendar, it, it doesn't it doesn't replace this it's just it's effectively changing how you're viewing your own board so you click on calendar and there that card appears on the date so you click it again to go back to your lists in order to be able to add more cards um you just click add due date um that one was the 16th so let's make that the 19th save it um kitchen samples let's add a date four days later you can set yourself reminders if you want them and then when i click on calendar now that will show me there there and there these ones don't have any kind of label on them um, but obviously if you if you're color coding in you know, for different themes within one list then that color coding would appear up there. Um, does that make sense? Please let me know if you need me to go that th through that again at all, or if those people who are asking for that are happy with that. Go through it again. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so go back and I will remove that so I can add it again. So you're in your board, looks like this, click on show menu, scroll down to where it says power ups, scroll down here to the calendars always in the essential power ups. If you don't want to scroll down, you can just type it there um, and it will bring up calendar. Add your calendar. Close these just to get them out of the way. Go into your cards um, and add some um, due dates to them. I'm going to make this one late. We should have been doing it two weeks ago. This is now overdue. <clears throat> and a teaser campaign starting tomorrow. So we've got some things in here. Some of them are overdue, some are fine. They've got plenty of time. One of them is tomorrow, so it's quite urgent. And then you click on your calendar and that shows them in here. So I can now look at my calendar of what activities are coming up for this particular product launch. And I can see that our social adverts should have been running for over a week um, and that our teaser campaign needs to be starting tomorrow and that next week's going to be busy because we've got to have our leaflets ready and we've got to start actually getting the product into production. Um, so that is how the calendar power up works. Hmm. Power ups aren't showing at the side. OK, Catherine. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, do you not have this show menu option here? Are you on a laptop? Do you have show menu here? No power-ups listed. Hmm. That might be, if you don't have this here, if it doesn't say power-ups here, um, that's potentially something that Trello will need to take up with you, but I'm, I'm probably come back to you at the end there and um, see if I can have a look at your screen and see if I can work out what's happening with that. Um, because it should just be in that list that is where it's meant to be. Um, 
So um, let's move back on to the automations that I was talking about. I know there was a question about this one. Um, if that stands for if this, then that. And it's basically the same as um, Zapier or Zapier. Um, it's a way of making an action happen when you complete a certain criteria. It's, the, it's similar to the if function in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so these first two um, are third party tools. I'm not going to go into them particularly deeply or show them because they've sort of been superseded. Um, but they do replace the need to email stuff to your own cards if you're out and about. Um, they are ways of automating that delivery, um, but they in themselves require you to take an action. And in some ways, you could just as easily take that action by saving it straight to your own board. Um, so, for example, as I said at the beginning, I would save um, articles that I wanted to share on social media into my pocket drive and then pocket by tagging it that would trigger an if this then that recipe which um, was set up to say when when an item is added to pocket with this tag then send it to this particular google spreadsheet um, i then adapted it to say if it's set up with this tag um, send it to this particular trello board now you don't need to create these yourselves on um, ift it's all there already. There are hundreds and thousands of recipes on there and you just select the one which matches what you want it to do. Um, just like um, Zapier, they're already set up. You just choose which Zap you want to utilize. You don't need to create them or code them or anything like that. It just means that some of the hard work is taken away in terms of what you need to do. Um, but obviously now that Trello has its own Chrome extensions and bookmarklets and mobile apps, these integrations aren't so necessary anymore. Um, so instead of saving something to Pocket and then that saving it to Trello for me, I can just bring up an article that I want to save. And if I'm on my laptop, um, I can click along the top of the screen um, where I've got various bookmarklets saved on my bookmarks bar. Um, for whether I want that article, to, which article, the article I want to be saved to whichever board I want it saved to. So I've got a direct link to each board along my bookmark bar. So that is then really simple. It just, I click on it, it pops up asking me which list I want to save it to. I select the list, click done, and, and that's that. And from my phone, I would just click the three dots at the top of the Chrome page that I'm on, it asks me where I want to share it to and I select the Trello app and that, that's as simple as that. So there are really, really easy ways now that you can save stuff to your Trello boards while you're out and about without needing to use some of these third party tools, which is obviously simpler. But the one automation that is worth looking into if you decide that you do want to streamline some of your processes is this one. It's Butler. I could get my pointer to work. And this is one which um, is integrated into Trello now. It was first launched in 2016 and was a separate program, but it was built specifically to work with Trello. But in December 28, 2018, Trello's parent company decided to buy it. And now it's fully part of the program. Um, and we saw it on those screenshots up in the bar at the top. There was um, the word butler and like a little, um, a little symbol of the cloche. So um, I will show you now a quick video of how to add Butler, well not how to add it because it's automatically added, but how you can use it. Um, so I'll bring that up now. This is going to be a really, really quick video. It's just to introduce you to Butler, Trello's integrated automation tool. It just sits here on the top of all of your boards. So when you're in a board, you just click on that. And then it gives you a load of automation tips to begin with. Now, this is only a test board, so there isn't enough um, information in it. There hasn't been enough activity on it for it to make any tips to me, as it will tell you. 
But once it starts to see how you're using your boards and how you are moving things between your various different lists, it will start to suggest to you which of the automations that are available are going to help save you time. On the side here, these are some of the tips that you can use. These are some of the automations you can use. So there's the rules one, which is um, the, the most commonly known rule because it's the same things that Zap and If This Then That use. So as it says, you could, for example, have a rule which means Butler automatically reacts to an action. So um, when you take action on a board, it automatically gives it a smiley face to show that you've done it. Um, when something happens, you tell it to do something else. That can be a rule you set in place. And it gives you some examples on here. So this is a good one. Um, once it's moved to the done column, then, every, then immediately it's marked as complete and all members are taken off the card and the card's effectively archived. Uh, that just remo removes a few tiny little admin steps that someone would otherwise have to do. Um, similarly, you might want to say whenever you're on a card, you have a certain due date that's going to be um, like post a comment saying, I got this. So again, it's just, it's a, like an automated response, like you might have an automatic email response to certain things. Um, you can you can do some of those things with Trello. You can add buttons to your cards. So it shows here. So you can create buttons at the top. Um, and these these are ones that would appear, it says on the back, obviously there isn't a literal back, but um, these are some examples. Um, assign me to something. Um, move something to done once you've got once you click the completed button. Um, send it to a reviewer. So if you've um, you've you've set somebody as being someone who's going to review it, so there, set the field stage to in review and post a comment that says it's ready for review. This is something which would potentially be quite useful for me to do on my content approval boards. That as soon as there's a card there, that I set Trello up to automatically tell people there's something that needs approving. However, when I do add stuff to it, I'm adding like 50, 60 items, so that would tend to get rather overwhelming. And the other button is, as it says, give it superpowers. And these would appear at the top of a board. Um, and all of this, for example, if you have, if you were doing your own to-do list and every week you wanted to completely refresh it, then you would just have a complete setup there. Monday setup, archive all cards in this this week and move them to last week um, and then move everything that's potentially in a weeks to come, we'll move it forward. Away. So that would be a really great way to have Trello help you manage your own time management. Um, you could prioritize things. That would be a great idea, particularly again for your, your own time management. Um, and if you're having difficulty deciding what you want to do next, let Trello decide for you and have it shuffle them. Now these ones, the calendar commands, um, we can't do that one on a free account. And the same with the due date, you can't do this one on a free account. So there's some really useful things in there if you were able to do them, but it's these top three rules, cards and boards, which you can do on a free account. So that's Butler. Um, I won't bring my screen back on because I've got me down there. Um, Oh, you've sorted it, Catherine. That's great. Um, I'd be interested to know how you sorted it. I might chat to you privately about that later um, in case it comes up as another issue for someone else. So um, let me know if you've got any questions about Butler. Um, it's a case really of once your boards have been active for a while, then do pop in there and see which things it suggests you try automating if you want to. Um, Trello works perfectly fine without using Butler. It's only been on there for just over a year. Um, so if you don't wish to use it, then don't use it. It, it works fine without, without having that on there. So on to the last Mentimeter. This is going to be a really quick. So no, this is the last of the three top tips. Keep it simple. Definitely keep it simple. This is, I'll bring me back up. This is one of the things that Trello itself suggests. This is in its own top tips for using Trello. 
start just with your to-do list. If you're wanting to get to know Trello a bit better, um, it's all about just using it. So start with your simple things I've got to do, things that I'm currently in the process of doing and things that I have done. Um, and this is a really easy way to just get to grips with Trello. Um, don't worry about things like adding fancy backgrounds. They can be quite distracting. Um, just start with three simple columns, um, use it to track your workflow. And then once you're in a position where you're starting to think you could do with some other people on the board, because some of the things that you have to do or that are in progress require someone else to do something, then um, add that person to your board and assign them an action on that card. Um, and then potentially once you've got some activity on there, you could investigate Butler uh, so that everything that is past its due date automatically moves to the done pile, assuming that due date has been ticked. And then this way, it just builds up and it becomes second nature to use Trello in order to manage your workflow. So that is most of what there is to show on Trello, really. Um, certainly as an introduction, that is enough really for, to be getting on with in terms of getting to grips. Butler is probably the most advanced thing that Trello offers at the moment. Um, so what I would like to know from you all is if I say Trello to you, what do you say to me? This is, um, you've finished that sentence. If you go to the menti.com and use that code, um, want to build a word cloud of what you think when you think of Trello. Do you think that it's easy, it's straightforward? Do you think um, hard to use? Do you think unnecessary for me? Um, positives, negatives, um, if you keep it to a word or two or three words, we'll start to build up a word cloud on this screen of people's opinions of, of Trello as a potential tool for them and their business. Looking forward to seeing what people think of this. Great. Organising chaos, yes, absolutely. Overly complex, that's interesting that someone feels that way. Definitely be interested in talking further with you if you're finding it still feels quite complex. A lot of you finding it quite useful and easy to set up. And I find it quite intuitive myself as well. Once I've been using it, a lot of people recommended it to me and I was a bit like, mm, I, I just use my diary and write things in my diary and it's fine. But actually I have found it really, really useful for remote working because um, you, can't, you can't just wander over to someone's desk and ask them if they've completed X, Y, Z. Um, and actually it's really useful to be able to communicate through something like Trello with people. It helps keep my inbox under control apart from anything else. Um, and if you, if you do use something like Slack in order to have those real-time conversations online, um, then linking Trello to it can just enhance that altogether. Um, if it's not something that you need, that's absolutely fine. But for those of you who are trying to manage team working, I think um, this could potentially be really useful for a lot of you. Let's see if we've got any other questions. Um, no, my presentation isn't copyrighted. Um, we're going to be sending a copy, as Helen's just said, we're going to be sending a copy of this out and uploading it. Um, without the next section, because um, this is the, the actual training, the presentation, um, and we will then move on now to, um, to questions. Um, once a board is archived, is the information still easily available? You can view your archived boards. Um, when you archive something, it gives you the option to completely delete it or to just leave it as archived. So you would just then go to view what you've archived. Um, so it is easily available, yes. Um, only if you completely delete it would you actually lose it. Um, I don't think I have any archive boards to show you that. Um, come out of this again. Okay, so 
this is your chance now for you to um, ask some questions. Um, if I can share a screen to, to demonstrate it to you, that's great. Um, if you would like to come on, um, then just let us know in the chat and we can turn on your microphone and your video if you would like to. Um, let's have a look. Helen, or are you wanting to take over to, to lead at this point or shall I stay on here for now? That's way yes. too bad. Hi, Rebecca. Yeah, it was just really while people are thinking of, of questions to ask, um, yeah. just to let them know really about the next webinar we have coming up, which is um, next week, Wednesday, the 15th of April. And that's about um, resetting your digital marketing strategy. And that will be hosted by Johnny Ross from Fleet Marketing. So if people want to sign up, they can do so via the website. Um, but just going back, I guess, to today, well, to today's session, if I can get the words out, um, for me, I've always sort of used Trello as a very basic list making, um, you know, to stay on top of what I had to do today, like that particular day. But for me, this has been fabulous because I had no idea of everything that you could do in terms of not just time saving, but cost saving and also the power ups and the automation. It's just, I mean, it's endless, isn't it? And I know I have got some clients that are using it pretty much as a as a CRM system to help with managing sales and customers as well. So that's really brought it to life for me today. So, so thank you very much for that, Rebecca. Welcome. Okay, so the recording is going to be finished so that people can